in the midst of the darkest time in your life, God knows. No matter how complex, no matter how full of complexity my life may be, whatever God has designed for my life, he will surely bring it to pass. God knows exactly what you're going through and he's getting ready to bring you out. In this life-changing message, Dr. Daryl Scott encourages the believer that God would not leave you in the state that you're in. He sees and he knows. He knows the way that I take. He knows that I'm walking in the steps that he is on for my life he knows I've been faithful he knows I've been committed he knows I've been honest he knows I've kept his way he knows I esteem his word and not only do I know that he knows I also know that because he knows he also cares and because he cares he's going to do something about the situation that I'm in right now Order your copy of this powerful message, He Knows, by Dr. Daryl Scott, on CD or DVD today by calling 216-397-0987, 216-397-0987, or log on to www.nsrcministries.org. Asking you, do you believe your blessing is on the way? Everybody trying to keep me from going up. And I fall, I will get up again. Somebody say, I'm back again, I'm back. I said, power, power. You've been trying to pray, but you can't get power over that flesh. But tonight, God's gonna give you power. It's getting ready to be a divine interruption. He said, because a radical praise is about to take over. <laughs> I've lost everything, God is changing it. Why are you in the middle of it? I shall see it. I shall embrace it. Just need somebody to know that the power has been returned and it is in this house. Give him a prize. What he's going to give you next is going to be so grand that everything that we was seem insignificant. of this series today by calling 216-397-0987 or logging on to nsrcministries.org Reviving the Fire 2011 Manifest Purpose The Return of Power Get your copy today Today on Catch the Spirit God built you uh, to be able to withstand uh, a certain amount of pressure uh, and then God prepared the pressure uh, that he built you to withstand. God built you to carry uh, a certain amount of weight. Uh, then God prepared the weight uh, that you were built to carry. Uh, he knows uh, how much you can bear uh, and he will not uh, allow you to be tempted, uh, allow you to be tested, uh, allow you to be tried. Uh, oh, over and above that which you were built to bear. You're tuned into the Catch the Spirit broadcast, an outreach ministry of the New Spirit Revival Center with Doctors Daryl and Belinda Scott. Prepare your spirit to be changed by this powerful, life-changing message. If you are in the Cleveland area, New Spirit Revival Center is one church in two locations, 3130 Mayfield Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, and 1061 Clearview Avenue, Akron, Ohio. For more information on how to purchase today's message, call 216-397-0987, 216 -397 or log on to the website at www.nsrcministries.org. And now, get ready to be blessed by this powerful word. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning with the first verse down through the tenth verse. Let's read. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, 
wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Let's pray. Father, in the magnificent, tremendous, outstanding, spectacular name of Jesus, whose we are and whom we serve, we thank you once again for the opportunity and the privilege of gathering together to worship you in spirit and in truth and in the liberty that our great country provides. Father, we now incline our ears to hear and our hearts to receive line upon line and precept upon precept, every jot and tittle of your word as it is presented to us on this morning. We bind the devil in every way, form, or fashion, every hindering spirit, every restless, distractive, inattentive spirit that might seek to prevent us from receiving what thus saith the Lord. And we thank you in advance for the blessings we expect to receive today. In Jesus' name we pray. Let those in agreement with this prayer say amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In the midst of the darkest time in your life, God knows. No matter how complex, no matter how full of complexity my life may be, whatever God has designed for my life, he will surely bring it to pass. God knows exactly what you're going through, and he's getting ready to bring you out. In this life-changing message, Dr. Daryl Scott encourages the believer that God would not leave you in the state that you're in. He sees and he knows. He knows the way that I take. He knows that I'm walking in the steps that he is ordered for my life he knows I've been faithful he knows I've been committed he knows I've been honest he knows I've kept his way he knows I esteem his word and not only do I know that he knows I also know that because he knows he also cares and because he cares he's going to do something about the situation that I'm in right now Order your copy of this powerful message, He Knows, by Dr. Daryl Scott, on CD or DVD today by calling 216-397-0987, 216-397-0987, or log on to www.nsrcministries.org. Can I continue? Now that statement, that phrase, we are his workmanship, contains the entire mission. It contains the entire assignment of Jesus in its application to the believer. Amen. Because what is being declared, saints of God, is that it is in Christ that God is making us what God would have us to be. Stay with me, I promise I bless you. Uh, it's in Christ, amen. I repeat that God is making us what he would have us to be. Uh, it's not in a man that God is making us. Uh, it's not in a woman that God is making us. Uh, it's not in an occupation or a position, not in an environment or surrounding, uh, not in the approval or disapproval of others uh, or the acceptance of a rejection of people. Uh, the sphere in which God operates uh, to the forming of our lives uh, and the perfecting of his thought for our lives in us and through us is in Christ Jesus. Are you with me? And so by the way of his incarnation, which is the act of God becoming man, by way of his incarnation, man comes into conscious nearness to God. 
God. By way of his life, we gain insight into the heart of God when God said, let us make man in our own image. Amen. We get the grasp of the revelation of that statement when we look at Jesus Christ. In the death of Jesus Christ, there was revealed to man the mystery of blood atonement, whereby sin is not only dealt with, but it's canceled so that man could find his new opportunity to live a life in fellowship with God. By way of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, power was placed at man's disposal so that we not only find ourselves in Christ, souls who have received pardon from sin, but we find ourselves as beings who have been equipped with all of the resources necessary for the accomplishment of God's divine purpose in our lives. Say amen. And by way of the authority of Jesus over our individual lives through the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost, there is the administration of the will of God and the perpetual of commu perpetual communication of power from God to and through us. Somebody say amen. Can I keep on? I'm trying to lay a foundation for us to shout off of. Now, once again, the purpose of the new creation uh, and the purpose of this new method uh, is manifested in the text, amen, uh, of Ephesians 2 and 10. It says, we are his workmanship. Uh, everyone say, we are his workmanship. Uh, created in Christ Jesus. Come on, say it. Uh, for good works. Now, what you have to understand, saints of God, is that, amen, uh, the fact that the phrase for good works does not refer simply to specific acts of Christian service or acts of Christian benevolence. It does not refer where it says we are created unto or for good works. It doesn't refer to doing good deeds for people or it doesn't refer to helping the community or feeding the hungry or clothing the unclothed. It doesn't refer to random acts of kindness which a superficial reading of the King James Version might lead you to believe. Even though those things do possess some meritorious virtue, they serve the if 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 they serve the purpose of contributing to someone's salvation. See, otherwise they'll come to you a hungry sinner and they'll leave away from you a full sinner. And what's that? Say amen. Or they'll come to you an unclothed sinner and they'll leave away from you a clothed sinner. This phrase for good works does not reference separate specific acts or deeds. This phrase for good works actually refers to one's entire life. It refers to one's whole life if you read it in the original Greek. Now the Amplified Version translates verse 10 of Ephesians chapter 2 somewhat differently, a little more definitively. Uh, it reads in the Amplified Version, uh, for we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, uh, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, mm, that we may do those good works which God predestined, uh, planned beforehand for us, uh, taking paths that he's prepared ahead of time uh, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. I'm going to get y'all blessed after a while. Look at somebody and say, we are created for good works. Can I make it plainer? The writer of the book of Ephesians, the apostle Paul, is contrasting the present with the past conditions of these Ephesian believers, these believers who reside in the city of Ephesus, amen. And he said to them, amen, uh, he referenced in verse three, uh, among whom, and he was speaking of the children of disobedience, we all once lived in the lust of our flesh and the lust of our mind. Paul here was addressing the entire life of the believer before they were recreated in Christ Jesus. He said we all lived in constant endeavors to satisfy our desire for fleshly passion. Y'all don't want to help me, I help myself. He said we all lived for the fulfillment of the lust of our flesh and the lust of our mind. There were no exceptions. Each and every one of us without fail lived to satisfy our desire for carnality. Our lives were devoted to the pursuit of carnal pleasure. Everything that we did, everything that we drank, everything that we smoked, everywhere that we went was in pursuit of carnal pleasure. Don't shout me down. 
the life we lived, the thoughts we thought proceeded in answer to fleshly passions and carnal desires uh, but everything changed when we came into Christ Jesus how many of you can testify to the fact that the course of your entire life changed oh help me again somebody when you came into Christ Jesus your appetite changed your desires changed your mindset your thoughts your process is your behavior patterns they changed when you came in to Christ Jesus so that our lives now proceed not in answer to the desires of, or the passions of our flesh our lives now proceed in answer to the indwelling presence of the Holy Ghost and the perpetual inspiration of Christ in us who is our hope of glory I'm still building y'all bear with me I promise I'll bless you. Now there are two subordinate statements that have been made in this text, Ephesians 2.10. Two subordinate statements. Two sub-statements. Two sub-tweets on top of this main tweet. An explanation of this one declaration that we are his workmanship. First it states that we are created unto or we are more precisely created for good works. You were made to make it and you were built to take it you might have bent under the load, but baby, you did not break. I'm asking you, do you believe your blessing is on the way? Uh, my feet, everybody trying to keep me from going. When I fall, I will get up again. Somebody say, I'm back again. I'm back. I said, power. Power. You've been trying to pray, but you can't get power over that flesh. But tonight, God's going to give you power. It didn't better be a divine interruption. He said, because a radical praise is about to take over. I've been through turmoil. I've lost everything. God is changing it. Why are you in the middle of it? I shall see it. I shall embrace it. Need somebody to know that the power has been returned and it is in this house. Give him a prize. What he's going to give you next is going to be so grand that everything that went before it will seem insignificant. series today by calling 216-397-0987 or logging on to nsrcministries.org reviving the fire 2011 manifest purpose the return of power get your copy today somebody say no options no options God doesn't give you any options when you're part of his plan it's either God's way or no way at all when you become part of the plan but wait a minute wait a minute I'm not gonna leave you right there remember look at somebody and tell them we are his workmanship we are his poem we are a manufactured product we are a piece of work that has been perfected and since God has perfected us. It means that we have been made ready for whatever experiences that God desires for us to experience. I've got to make it plainer. Somebody say make it plainer then preacher. God has created us, the Bible says, to have a good life and God has prepared a good life for us to have and then God has perfected. He has equipped us for everything that his will designates for us and all of the designations that are within his will are prepared in consideration of the equipment that he has built into us 
You don't understand. I've got to make it plain as Sherman. God reveals to you your destination. And God conceals from you the situations you'll have to go through in order to get there. But he has placed in you the equipment necessary to get you there when you need to be there. Somebody say help him Holy Ghost. In other words, God built you to be able to withstand a certain amount of pressure and then God prepared the pressure that he built you to withstand. God built you to carry a certain amount of weight. Then God prepared the weight that you were built to carry. He knows how much you can bear and he will not allow you to be tempted, allow you to be tested, allow you to be tried over and above that which you were built to bear. Touch somebody and tell them you were made to make it. You were made to make it. You were built to take it. You were equipped to go through it. And that's why you're still here. That's why you're still sane. That's why you're still sober. And that's why you're still saved. Because you were made to make it. And you were built to take it. You might have bent under the load but baby you did not break you might have slowed down along the way but you did not stop you might have given in to temptation but you've never given up on God you might have wondered how you make it through but you never wondered if God would ever bring you out shout hallelujah shout glory look at somebody and say no matter what my problems I was able to maintain my praise no matter what my worries I was able to maintain my worship no matter how I wanted to let go I kept on holding on because God has equipped me look at somebody and say God has equipped you to be able to deal with whatever you have to deal with on your way to your destiny shout about it right there look at somebody and say God designed you to deal with it you can deal with the depression you can deal with jealous friends you can deal with money problems you can deal with family issues touch somebody and tell them you were designed to be able to deal with every issue every problem every circumstance every situation every judge every critic every hater every gossiper look at somebody and tell them God has designed you to deal with anything that comes your way touch your neighbor and tell them God knows what you are made of God knows what you got God knows what you can do and God allows you to go through so that you can find out just what your capabilities really are let me tell you something saints look at somebody and tell them God has prepared you for whatever the day has in store for you and everything that's coming your way even though it's unknown to you it's well known to God it says God has prepared a good life for you beforehand and then God causes you God leads you down paths that he has prepared for you to walk in ahead of time. How many of you know saints that God doesn't start at your problem and work up to your purpose? God starts at your purpose and works back to your problem. He doesn't start at the end. He doesn't start at the beginning and work to the end. He starts at the end and then works back to your beginning. So that everywhere you go in this journey called life, God's already been there before you ever got there. And he's already worked it out. Shout about it. Moses told Israel that God went before them in the way to seek out a place to pitch their tents in the wilderness, which means that wherever they went, God had already been there. 
everywhere they stopped was in a place which had been chosen for them by God. How many of you know God did not start at Joseph's pit and work his way up to the palace. He started at the palace and worked his way back to the pit and every step that Joseph took through the pit, through the slavery, through the prison, through the jungle were steps that were under ordained by God and touch somebody and tell them every step you've taken since you've been saved through the hurt through the pain through the divorce through the failure through the issue through the problem through the struggle they all were steps which have been ordered by God and the reason you were able to go through what you've been through is because God walked you through it. Shout about that right there. God walked you through the trouble. He walked you through the test. He walked you through the trial. He walked you through the turmoil. Every step of the way. Somebody say, walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. He's going to walk you. Look at somebody and say, God is going to walk you right into a breakthrough, right into a deliverance right into a blessing that you will not have room enough shout about it shout about it shout about it again he walked those boys through that fiery furnace walked Daniel through a den of hungry lions walked Israel right through a red sea and God is going to walk you right through whatever the enemy is trying to use to stop you from getting where God has ordained for you to go that's all we have time for today. You've been watching the Catch the Spirit broadcast, an outreach ministry of the New Spirit Revival Center with Drs. Daryl and Belinda Scott. To purchase a copy of this message in any format, call 216-397-0987, 216-397-0987, or log on to the website at www.nsrcministries.org. If you are in the Cleveland area, New Spirit Revival Center is one church in two locations, 3130 Mayfield Road, Cleveland Heights, Ohio, and 1061 Clearview. Avenue, Akron, Ohio. We invite you to join us for any one of our powerful Holy Ghost Charge midweek services. You don't want to miss Power Prayer. Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Cleveland Heights. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for Bible Study. Akron. Thursdays at 7 p.m. for Bible Study. Cleveland Heights. Make plans to join us in any one of our Holy Ghost Field worship services on Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in our Cleveland Heights location and 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in our Akron location. Join us again next time for another life-changing experience. In the midst of the darkest time in your life, God knows. No matter how complex, no matter how full of complexity my life may be, whatever God has designed for my life, He will surely bring it to pass. God knows exactly what you're going through and He's getting ready to bring you out. In this life-changing message, Dr. Daryl Scott encourages the believer that God would not leave you in the state that you're in. He sees and He knows. He knows the way that I take. He knows that I'm walking in the steps that He is on for my life he knows I've been faithful he knows I've been committed he knows I've been honest he knows I've kept his way he knows I esteem his word and not only do I know that he knows I also know that because he knows he also cares and because he cares he's going to do something about the situation that I'm in right now Order your copy of this powerful message, He Knows, by Dr. Daryl Scott, on CD or DVD today by calling 216-397-0987, 216-397-0987, or log on to www.nsrcministries.org. Are you frustrated because you have an exciting and innovative ministry or service people need and would enthusiastically take advantage of if only they knew about it? Don't know how to get the word out without breaking the bank? Look no further. Become a part of the Radio 1000 family today by calling 216-320-0000. Radio 1000 has your answer. In today's global market, you need a media outlet that is reliable, provides excellent service, and will get your business on the map. Call 216-320-0000. That's 216-320-0000.